So in this drill, Jono, you're working around a smaller box. Okay, it's a bit of a fitness drill and agility drill with your catching. So you go from orange backwards, work your way with side skips or forward, and then as you come out of the blue cane, I'll hit you a catch where you're trying to get it on your inside hip. Okay, there you go, mate, and go. That's it. Oh, sorry, catch. And then just walk back to the start again, and away you go. Again, hit it properly, Gav. That's good, good feet, mate. Nice small steps. Head up, that's it, good position. Excellent, mate, good. So in this drill, Jono, you've got your four coloured cones. Yep. As I throw it out, obviously, you take the catch, and then whatever coloured cone I call, you run around that cone, and then there's another catch coming to you as you come in. Yep. Okay, here we go. Red. <laughs> Yellow. Catch, mate. Blue. Catching, Jono, catch. White. Catch. Red, get there, catching, good feet mate, good feet. All right, so Jono, now we're looking at standing up to spinners. Yep. Um, so as I throw some on the full, you can just explain sort of your head alignment, your hands and where your feet go. Yeah, um, so just to start, I'll just talk about where your setup's supposed to be. Uh, the general idea is that your left foot to a right hander is starting on off stump. And depending on how far back it is, it's all about your reach. So you want to be finishing just behind the stumps, just to avoid that no ball situation. All right, so we'll get into it. Yep. Easy setup. So the general idea is, or well, when I explain it, is always having your hands, eyes, and feet working together. Yep. And if they work together, you'll be in a very good spot. So generally, just starting with our hands, we're focusing on a nice surface area, a very large surface area, with your dominant hand slightly overlapping your non-dominant hand. So I'm right-handed, so my right hand's slightly on top. Yep. So a big surface area, big presentation, hit the middle of the gloves. Now talking about my footwork, we're talking about a small step with my right foot to get slightly outside the line of the ball. So once I do that, just watch my head, it follows. So I'm catching a ball under my eyes, outside, preparing for that ball to either turn big or that small edge. So from where I'm from, John, it looks like I can see the top of your head or the um, the peak of your cap points to where, where you're watching the ball. Is that a good indication for coaches to look at? To make yeah, sure absolutely. the keeper's watching sure. it? Yeah, absolutely. You want to make sure. The number one rule is to watch the ball. And that's a great way to actually examine whether that's happening or not. So we'll just do a, a few a little bit wider. I just yep. want you to watch my feet. So once the ball goes wide, it's slightly more uncomfortable for the keeper because it's a larger movement and it's a little bit harder. So, see my feet here, I've slightly opened my foot because it allows my hips to rotate. So I can lengthen the catch, give myself a little bit more time. That's great for if the ball's turning large because the moment I don't open that foot, it's so like here, I close myself off, can't get that hip rotation, my leg stops me. So you just, once you go wide, small opening, Get those hips involved, head nice and close to the ball. Take, mate. Good take. Good. Okay, that's good um, technique. That's good. Another little important point that I'd like to point out is that for our left foot, which is what I refer to as my anchor, it has to stay there. Because the moment I drag, I then have to take a step, shift my weight, and then take the bars. It's too long, and you miss your stumping. So just Transfer your weight, back, there we go. For this drill, we've put some distractions in front of you and throw it a little bit uh, bit more overarm. Obviously, like a batsman coming down the wicket, you've got distractions, might nick the stump, so you get a, hopefully a little bit more like a game situation. Ooh. <laughs> Take. Ooh. So usually set the stumps up, one on off stump, one just sort of leg stumpish, and then the ball can go through Flick a stump maybe, so then there's a quick reaction. That's it, take mate, good feet. Ooh. Take, good hip, excellent hip. So Rosie, with the um, young kids we're using a tennis ball, now we've progressed with gloves, full size bat and cricket ball. Why would that be the case for older kids? Oh, well, obviously it's the best way to replicate what's gonna happen in the game. Catch mate. Obviously, if we've used the tennis ball up until this point, our confidence should be good. Got our helmet on, so 
no reason why we shouldn't get our head behind the ball. Really practice the fundamentals. Right, now we go left-handed Rosie. What's the catch position and your head position when you're to a lefty here? Yeah, so ideally preparing for an outside edge, we want to prepare with our head, our eye line slightly outside the line of the ball, just so we're not shying away from it. Get nice and close to it, get a really good look at it. So trying to catch inside or outside hip here, Rosie? Ah, uh, you want to kind of move across so that the edge is traveling towards you rather than trying to catch up with it. So you actually want to get slightly outside it. Yep. Okay, so this one, Rosie, is shadow batting. Um, do you use this a lot and why would you use this a lot? Yeah, I'd love to do this every session. I think it's the best way for the keeper to practice what's exactly in the game. Batsman trying to distract him. He can focus on his movements, really practice watching the ball. And do you like players to play inside, outside of the ball, do all the stuff they do in a game? Yeah, absolutely. You want exactly what you get in the game. So, ball's not always going to go on the outside of the bat. Just shadow batsman does crazy. whatever he would in the game. Just let him react as you would. And I'll just throw one down leg side now. Can you talk us through your footwork to the leg side now as you do it? Okay. Yeah, so obviously first step's really important. You want to get outside the line of the batsman, so that big first step is really important. And in saying that, our head position and our body height is also extremely important. Got to move really low. I notice there's a little kick out, so we'll do one more little kick out um, at the end of it. What's that for, Rosie, as you do the kick out? Kick out. Basically, it's all about, for me, trying to replicate the position I'd be to a left-hander. So try and finish with my right foot on leg stump with my left foot slightly dropped just to allow my hips if anything else happens. Uh, without replicating the left-hander. Yeah. Change it. One more buzz. Yeah, perfect. 